the we're only as strong as our weakest link policy, right? We have to find the most fearful American out there. And then everyone must behave accordingly to make that person feel a little bit better about walking around. It's like, well, that's that's just not how America works. Kimberly in Texas, you're on the Ben Shapiro Show, line three. Go for it, Kimberly. Hi, Ben. Man, this is cool to talk to you. Um, hope you're doing well. Um, okay, so I just want to say that I, I absolutely agree with you on the vast majority of things. I listen every day. I think your show is awesome. But I, there's one issue where I think we're at an impasse, and I'd like to explain to you why I think you're wrong. Sure, <laughs> go for cool. it. Um, okay, so I want to know how you square your libertarian-leaning and pro-life views with mandatory vaccination. Sure, so, so a few things on this. One— you have to determine that there are differences in, in my opinions with regard to vaccines that are directly designed to prevent you from getting a disease and ones that rely on herd, uh, on a herd immunity in order to prevent others from, from getting a disease. So for example, if there is a vaccine that was only, the, the only purpose of it is for you to be vaccinated against a particular disease, but there's no real risk of you becoming a carrier for that disease, for example, then that's totally up to you because obviously it's your choice or not whether to have a disease. If, however, there is, are certain diseases like mumps, measles, rubella, like MMR, right, which, which are highly transmissible and where you require herd immunity specifically to prevent against the transmission of that disease to people who cannot have vaccination. So I'm speaking specifically about pregnant women, kids with cancer, right, that sort of thing and that prevent the transmission of that disease to other people, then you run into the externality problem. And even libertarians believe that externalities are not protected by law. When it comes to herd immunity for diseases, where you require 100% of the population to be vaccinated in order to prevent the transmission of diseases to people who can't actually have the vaccine, well, then you're talking about a, a, a non-libertarian principle being invoked, so I don't have a general problem with that. You can't attend a public school unless you get the vaccination, which makes a certain amount of sense. You don't want to expose the general public to the transmission of a disease. It's been well substantiated that the risks of vaccinations, particularly the most popular ones, are extraordinarily low. When we talk about the government having a fund to, to settle all this sort of stuff, that's because if the government is mandating that these sorts of vaccinations be carried out on a wide range of the population, they don't want the tort system to disincentivize vaccine makers from making those sorts of vaccines in the first place. And so they have picked up the liability on behalf of the taxpayers. It is important to note that $4 billion in liability over the course of 50 years for 330 million Americans is actually not a large amount of money, nor is it an admission that the vaccines are actually what is causing the the back uh, these sort of bad things to happen. Yeah, exactly. I've been pushing vaccination since the day that this was available. I've been vaccinated. My wife has been vaccinated. My parents have been vaccinated. Listen, I, again, I'm, I'm, I think that a few things can be true at once. One, I think the vaccines work. I think that it is a good idea to get them, particularly if you're above the age of 21. Yeah, by the way, the data tend to support the notion that natural immunity may be actually much more durable than vaccine-driven immunity. Right? There's some data from Israel that have supported that idea. So, I'm noticing that there's an overt viciousness with the way that people are talking about people on the right who are, back, who are unvaccinated that doesn't apply to people on the left. The vaccine is 95% effective in preventing you from getting the virus and also mitigates the severity of the disease. 99% of those who actually get COVID-19 survive. In other words, get the vaccine. Dose. They are going to force millions of people to choose between quitting their jobs and getting vaccinated in a time when the pandemic is already ending.
And everybody who wants a vax has been able to get a vax. And now even children can get a vax. This is authoritarian. It is garbage. It is anti-scientific. We need your help. And we, need, we have already spent tens of thousands of dollars on our lawyers. We filed a lawsuit as of this morning. And we are taking them to court. We will fight this all the way to the Supreme Court if need be. Obviously, lawsuits cost a lot of money and you have to have great legal partnership in order to win. And that's why we are working with the folks over at Alliance Defending Freedom and over at the Dillon Law Group. It is now perfectly clear that we were lied to, that we were lied to, and we were lied to at a very high level from very, very early on by both the vaccine companies in terms of the ability of the vaccine to prevent transmission, and we were also lied to by our politicians who apparently knew better, and they just kept lying. I suggested that people should get the vaccine back in about December of 2020 for specifically this reason. That was the available information at the time. Now, there are people who are saying, ignore that information. It's not true, but and, and maybe they turned out to be right, as it turns out. It can be that you distrust the data. It can be you don't trust the people who are giving you the data. But the big problem here is that when you have an entire institution like the scientific institutions or the government, and the government is issuing lies in order to get you to do a thing, and then it turns out that these things are lies, well, people's distrust in the institution is going to skyrocket, right? These people have been fibbing to us all along. They think that they can control us and not give us the data. If you want to at least make a recommendation on policy, you cannot lie about the data or provide us no data and then expect us to follow your all-knowing guidance. Welcome to the party, pal.